Uh, chair recognizes Ms. Luna from Florida. Mr. Shapley, did the FBI first learn of the Delaware computer shop processing a laptop that allegedly belonged to Hunter Biden and contained evidence of potential crimes in October of 2019? Did the FBI first learn of it? Yes. I don't, I don't know if I speak about who first learned of it. Okay. Um, the answer would be yes, <laughs> but thank you. And isn't it true that the FBI veri verified the laptop's authenticity in November of 2019 by matching the device number against Hunter Biden's iCloud account? Uh, yeah, I believe that's in my transcript, and that's accurate. Correct, transcript 12. The FBI analyzed the computer, correct? There was a report that the FBI CART team analysis had taken place. Do, can, you, can you point to uh, just a page of my transcript so that I... Page 12. I, okay, page 12. Or transcript 12. So could you repeat the uh, question, please? Uh, just isn't it true that the FBI verified the laptop's authenticity in November of 2019 by matching the device number against Hunter Biden's iCloud account? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And they performed an FBI CART team analysis? Yes, that's, that's yes. Mr. Ziegler, did you see this report? I don't think that I talked about that in my transcript. Correct. Um, I'm assuming that that was probably very frustrating, being that you were conducting an investigation. So, so I can speak to this again because I did uh, contemporaneously document a long meeting about the laptop, mm -hmm. and uh, Special Agent Ziegler uh, c confirmed in that, and it was released in House Ways and Means Committee testimony, that, uh, that he pointed out individual pieces of data that he was provided, and then he asked why he hadn't seen other pieces of data and that's when AOC, uh, Assistant United States Attorney Wolf told them that prosecutors were withholding information from the investigators. And I think what's important with withholding, they never said what they were withholding. So I think that that is like important. So for, um, to my understanding, the U.S. Attorney said that you haven't seen it because for a variety of reasons, they kept it from the agents. So they kept this information from you. I think it's important to know, correct? That's correct. Okay. Isn't it relevant evidence for you and your team to review, Mr. Ziegler, that this type of evidence would help you to conduct your investigation? So in, a, in, a, in an everyday normal investigation, you would want to know, you, you're the investigators. We're the ones that are supposed to process the information and provide those, the relevant information to the prosecutors. So we should know absolutely everything that we're looking at because we might testify to it one day. So it's safe to say that it's not a normal practice to withhold evidence from agents reviewing a case? It's not a normal practice to withhold and not tell us what you're withholding from us. Do you know who made that decision to withhold information from the agents? That I do not know. Okay. And it's not in my transcript. Okay. Mr. Shapley, and your team are learning about the existence of this information, and you are being denied information at the same time. And this is October 2020, correct? Time frame? Uh, yes. Um, at that same time, did you remember Hunter Biden's laptop being discussed or rather suppressed by the media? I generally remember the discussion of the laptop. Uh, I, I think everybody heard about the laptop. I don't know if, if I talked, uh, knew about the media suppressing it. So I think it's important to note that the FBI learns about the laptop in 2019. That's 2019, not 2020. And in fact, the FBI authenticated the laptop in November of 2019, then takes possession of the laptop, does analysis, but these analyses and information are not provided to you guys, the IRS agents conducting the case. Mind you, the folks running the nuts and bolts of the criminal tax fraud case. They're learning about all this information and yet at the same time being denied access to it. Meanwhile, the media is actively working to suppress that. And at the same time, 51 national security officials sign on to a letter saying that the FBI, uh, of which the FBI has authenticated saying that it is Russian disinformation. This is, mind you, Joe Biden's son, which I think it's important to note that many of my colleagues try to make this about race and saying that there's a two-tiered justice system for black and brown people, and yet we are investigating, according to their terms, a man of white privilege who is being aided and abetted by this administration and being criminally covered for by the Department of Justice, and yet somehow that's not supposed to be a topic of discussion. I have 41 seconds left. Would you guys like to say anything for the record so the American people can know what's really happening in this country? So I, I do have something. So there's two things. There, I believe that AUSA Leslie Wolf and U.S. Attorney David Weiss would say phenomenal things about my work, and I know they have said that. They have said that we did a great job in this investigation. I want to make that clear to everyone, that this isn't, we're not disgruntled, we're not out here to, to get people. We're here for accountability and that we learn from this. 
That's the most important part of why we're here. Well, you are doing great, and I know that you are not conservative. I know you're not a Republican, but I will say this. Thank you for at least bringing faith back to some part of the IRS so that people understand that just because your last name is Biden does not mean that you're held above the law. Mr. Moskowitz from Florida. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, And gentlemen, thank you for appearing today. Uh, Thank you for being a public servant. And there should be no retaliation against you as whistleblowers. Unlike my colleagues that said nothing, and supported President Trump when he retaliated and fired Vindman uh, and escorted him from the building for appearing in an investigation. That shouldn't happen to you. But of course, they said nothing when it happened to other people. We heard a lot about the Bidens, the Bidens, the Biden family, Biden associates, right? Bidens, plural, the S, what does the apostrophe mean? But not Joe Biden. Didn't hear a lot about Joe Biden. Why? Because he didn't do anything. This has nothing to do with him. You know, my colleagues talked about foreign countries, you know, foreign entities trying to make it all scary for the American people. Of course, President Trump got $5.4 million from the Chinese while he was president because they were leasing space in Trump Tower. He goes out and air kisses President Xi. Totally perfect. Jared Kushner gets $2 billion from the Saudis, even though he oversaw Mideast peace. Totally kosher. Ivanka Trump. You know, she's doing business with the Chinese while she's working in the White House. Totally beautiful. Right? Why do I bring that up? They want to say you have credibility. The problem is they have none. They have no credibility. And because you're here at their behest, their lack of their credibility questions your credibility. Not because of you personally, but because of what they've done over the last several years. So the chairman says you're credible. You want to know, actually, what they feel about you? People like you who work in government. I got pages of it. It goes on for years. But you know what? I'll just read a couple of adjectives. Trump has called people like you so-called whistleblowers, fake whistleblowers, partisan people, political hack jobs, scams, frauds, traitors, cowards, spies, losers, clowns, thugs, puppets, unelected bureaucrats, the swamp, and my favorite, the deep state. By the way, you members of the deep state? You members of the deep state? Did you stop paying? It's a rhetorical question. It, did you stop paying your deep state dues? You did you not attend the latest deep state meeting? Is that why you're, you're not in the deep state? I can't tell when they want people like yourself to be in the deep state, not in the deep state, depending upon what the deep state is saying. Again, it undermines their credibility. It undermines government. It undermines the Americans' trust in government. It undermines our institutions. And throughout all of this, for years, four years of it, they said nothing. And now, it, you know, in an effort to own Hunter Biden, okay, they're assembling nude photos of him, right? Having some intern have to sit in a room and blow up these photos and put it on poster board and figure out, oh, which ones are beyond the pale. Mr. Shapley, you you said that the DOJ was slowing down the investigation. Uh, But some of that happened when President Trump was president. And and I found it strange that when my colleague tried to ask both of you these questions about when your perceived slowness of this happened, you all struggled for a period of time to admit that it started under President Trump. Was President Trump directing that DOJ to slow down the investigation? He wasn't, just like President Biden isn't now. So if there's any perceived issues with DOJ, it's with DOJ, it's not with the president. Mr. Ziegler, you said no one's above the law regardless of political affiliation. Do you think the president's son-in-law, not as an IRS agent, as a person, do you think the president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, who worked in the White House, couldn't get security clearance until the president made it happen, was put in charge of Mideast peace, and with no investment experience, got $2 billion from the Saudis. You guys made a lot of noise today about $17 million. But what about $2 billion? Do you think, as a person, that should be looked at? Sounds a little strange. Congressman, thank you for that question. Given the statute, I am limited to my testimony. I understand. I got it. But think about it. $2 billion from a foreign country that he was put in charge of their policy while he worked in the White House. They got no questions about that. That's totally great, totally wonderful, right? 
You know, Joe Biden has been in Washington for almost 50 years. We didn't hear about Hunter until like a couple of years ago. Why? Because it's a pay attention, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, like the Wizard of Oz. Right? Donald Trump is in so much trouble, and they can't save him. But what they can do is they can spend taxpayer money and all the time while they control these hearings to convince the American people that somehow Joe Biden has done something wrong. But there's no evidence. None, zero, zilch, not a zippo. And you know how I know that? Because they couldn't even bring up their own impeachment. They had to bury it in committee on immigration, not on this topic, right? There are members of this committee that filed articles of impeachment, didn't bring it up for a vote, buried it in committee. Again, not on this topic, because there's no evidence on Joe Biden. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Chair recognized Ms. Bobert from Colorado. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, gentlemen, uh, for being here today. I appreciate you. Uh, uh, now, if, if Mr. Shapley, uh, Mr. Zeigler, if, if you could each uh, just quickly, maybe 20 seconds or less, um, summarize what did each of you um, find when you criminally investigated Hunter and Joe Biden, um, particularly as it relates to China? So, specifically related to China, uh, there is... Uh